the conference is a time to go meet people, interact with companies, uh, interact with speakers, find your co-founder, find investors. Like it, it's, it's such an important platform for you to make a difference in your own existence in Bitcoin. As we dive more into the digital world of Bitcoin, the time that you spend with your Bitcoiners IRL is really important. And much of that happens at Bitcoin conferences. So today, very excited to sit down with Brandon Green, who is running the Bitcoin conference that is coming up in Nashville. Brandon, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's busy times in uh, the Bitcoin world, but certainly very exciting. And, and uh, the conference is coming up. It is upon us. You know, it's a date that we at Compass have been looking at since you know, since we got into 2024, it was like, okay, the Bitcoin conference, Nashville, what are we doing to get ready? What can we do before? What can we do during the conference? And what can we do after? And I think that that's probably where I want to take this conversation and just kind of talk about as we build up to the conference, a little behind the scenes, what are some things that you at BTC Media and you guys are thinking about as we build towards uh, Nashville? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, there's, there's so much context for this event. Um, you know, I, I think we've obviously gone through a halving recently. Uh, we're in a new cycle um, uh, that brings a lot of change to, you know, the, the mining world, uh, but also to just the Bitcoin industry in general. Uh, it feels like we're going into a new bull market. Uh, uh, you know, there's also been the ETFs that have been approved and, you know, we're in the middle of a um, election cycle. And so, there's, there's so many threads to pull on when it comes to the event this year. And, and, um, and obviously, uh, the backdrop of all of that, I, I left out the fact that, you know, this ordinal side, the, the different kind of uh, uh, conversations, debates around the usage of Bitcoin and, and uh, you know, uh, how we continue to scale it. Like, there's, there's just so much happening in the Bitcoin world right now that um, we're due for a big sink on uh, getting everyone caught up and, and talking through it and, you know, grabbing a drink and, and breaking some bread. So uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you just hit upon a holy host of things that I'm sure on each one of those, including ordinals, we could dive deep on ETFs. We could dive deep. You and I were speaking off mic before this about even the political implications that it feels like maybe this Bitcoin, Bitcoin conference has compared to others as Bitcoin has slowly become, you know, slowly, but suddenly and then all at once become a topic that candidates are even talking about, maybe not last night at the debates, but throughout their campaigns. It's now a topic. And so as we look at this Bitcoin conference, what is something from this Bitcoin conference that's going to make it different from the Bitcoin conference of last year in Miami? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, truly there, there's so much, but if you want to double tap on the, the you know, political element, Certainly, we're in an election year, and, and that is a huge thing for our industry. I mean, we've gone through four years of, of what I would say is uh, a relatively hostile administration to our industry. And, um, and what that has created is an environment to uh, uh, really coalesce around a, a pro-industry message. And, and there's multiple people taking up that, uh, uh, you know, that cause Obviously, RFK was was an early person to, to talk about it, and, and he's running for president. And he spoke at the event last year. He's speaking again this year. Um, and and you know, uh, we're coming off of the debate. You know that uh, uh, this will be on on Tuesday, right? So maybe a, a few days after. But certainly, the dynamics around RFK, the dynamics around the the political conversation when it comes to Bitcoin, are are continuing to evolve. Um, and and so it's it's going to be interesting to see that. Obviously, Trump has come in in the past few uh, weeks and really started to um, dabble in the Bitcoin conversation. Uh, there are early days there, but I think there's a lot more to come from from his team as well. So it's it's definitely something that's going to be a focus at the event, and um, and there's going to be a lot of people. You know, we're, we're we're getting hit up right now by a lot of very interesting people in the political world who are all FOMOing into the event right now. Uh, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of announcements to come. I won't, I won't leak anything here, but it's, it's getting weird. It's getting weird. I can tell you that. Yeah. You know, I was thinking back and I got into Bitcoin in 2017, but I wasn't really thinking about conferences then, you know, then it was just kind of like, okay, what is this thing? Right. I had put a couple hundred dollars into a Bitcoin ATM outside of Washington DC where I was at the time. And I got back some sats. I didn't even know that they were sats. I scanned a QR code and I got them. But at that point, 
that was after the 2016 election. So now I'm thinking about 2020. Was there a Bitcoin conference in 2020? I do not believe there was one because of COVID. Am I wrong or am I right? You're right. Our first our first Bitcoin conference was 2019, and then we were going to do one in 2020, uh, and obviously COVID canceled it. So uh, we ended up, you know, postponing it to 2021, and that was when we went big in Miami uh, uh, for the first year. And you know, it's been history ever since. But but not in 2020. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because 2020 was also a halving year and an election year. This just happened to be the way that Bitcoin is kind of tied into having an election year, at least in the US. And also for many people in the macro, it's a debt cycle year. So now we have 2024. It's been a halving year. You touched upon that. One of the first things you said, hey, we've got this halving year. We've got this election year. And now you're saying, and unfortunately, you can't share anything yet. You can't drop any big news that it is going to be political. Um, but how are you seeing and how is the overall, you know, your organization and how are you guys thinking about the positioning of Bitcoin as a political thing? Because I think if you even look back at the white paper, there's only three times the word institution is mentioned. And so Satoshi was really trying to make this thing maybe outside of the financial institutions and outside of the reach of government. And so how are you guys even thinking about that? Maybe even talking about it behind closed doors, if you're willing to share Bitcoin as now part of the political campaign agenda. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a fantastic question and it's a loaded question uh, because there, there's a lot of that that I agree with, which is like, you know, Bitcoin's not about um, integrating into the old world. Bitcoin is about building a bold new world uh, uh, and, you know, a world that's built with sound money at its core. Right. And, and I think that there is a, uh, a tension in our uh, community and in our industry about like how much time do we dedicate to this old broken system and, and trying to fix it. And how much do we dedicate to just like saying, screw it, let's build a, a new thing. And, and, you know, uh, Bitcoin is unaffected by, by politics. Uh, the, the thing that I always come back to is ultimately I'm American. And even if Bitcoin doesn't care, uh, and Bitcoin is unaffected, I'm affected by the politics and they can't go after Bitcoin very well, but they can go after me. And so, uh, I want a system where, uh, my usage of Bitcoin is, is protected. Uh, uh, and that's a system, not, not a Bitcoin system, but a political system. And so, uh, it is important to me and, and I'm not at the point yet where I'm ready to just, uh, uh, you know, peace out to a new country, try and, you know, start fresh. Uh, uh, I want to see America live up to the ideals and expectations it was founded on. And so uh, I think Bitcoin can be a tool to get back to that. Uh, and that's really why, you know, the, the political conversations are emerging. The last thing I'll <laughs> say is, uh, uh, is that the, um, uh, the conference is a mirror. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin is a metric. It's a tool. Uh, uh, there is no bias in Bitcoin, uh, but it can tell you interesting things by, by, you know, the way that you measure it and the way that it interacts with the system around it. Similarly, our conference is a, is a mirror in a lot of ways. We get critiqued for, you know, oh, there's, uh, uh, you're too one-sided in terms of politics. We reach out to everyone. You know, uh, uh, we want as many people across the aisle from different ideologies, different backgrounds, different beliefs. Uh, to come talk about Bitcoin. Like if you're talking about Bitcoin, you are within the editorial ethos of our event. The problem is in the US right now, there's only one side of the aisle that's really leaning into the the ideals and the ideas of Bitcoin. And in that way, like, you know, they're going to be overrepresented in our comp, uh, in our content. That is something that I wish was different, uh, but it's more just a reflection of reality than it is uh, a reflection of somehow like that, that we're trying to, you know, show one side over another. So that's kind of the state of the, the political conversation today in election year. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And as you called out before you answered that so eloquently, it was a loaded question. And I think it is, it is an interesting thing to think about if Bitcoin is just a mirror uh, and this is what it's reflecting. And I guess that's indicative of the current reality that is the political system as far as how it's relating to Bitcoin. It's going to be interesting to see that there's only one side really of the aisle that may actually be showing up in Nashville. And that is totally okay. That is the way it is. I do think by 2028, wherever the Bitcoin conference is, whether that's in Nashville or whatever it is, I do believe that there'll probably be a little bit uh, more of a diversity across the aisles, but only time will tell. When you think about the conference, what 
are the things that are probably most important. Is it the key speakers? Is it the workshops? Is it the panels? Is it the food? What are the things? And now I'm asking you another behind the scenes question is just a strict curiosity. What are the things mm -hmm. that you guys find are, are the most important uh, as you look towards the event, the things that people are really looking for? And, and I asked that because we recently on on our Compass Twitter, we ran a, a poll and it said, you know, what are you most looking for, uh, looking forward to at the conferences, workshops, panels, speakers, after hour events. Um, and I believe it was the panels and speakers, but you know, what are the things that you guys are really focused on? Like, Hey, what's our Pareto principle, right? Well, where are we, where are people going to get value out of? Yeah. Great, great question. So, uh, the behind the scenes look, here's what I tell my team. Okay. Uh, I tell my team, that the way that we have to think about the event is that we're throwing a party, okay? And and the way that you tell people about uh, the party and the way that you get them to come is you tell them who all is going to be there, right? It's like, hey, I'm throwing a party. Jarrett's going to be there. You got to come. Y'all are but You know, like that's that's truly what, what it is. And so, you know, the speakers and the content in a lot of ways are us advertising who all is going to be at the party, right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of simple. And so now, you know, it's a, it's a very important party, in my opinion, right? Uh, because it's the Bitcoin conference. It's where, you know, important conversations are had. It's where, you know, we, we as Bitcoin Magazine, as the Bitcoin conference, try and actually push the industry forward through, you know, some of the stuff we talked about in terms of politics, but also industry announcements. Tons of big deals happen, you know, behind the scenes uh, uh, between companies. Uh, uh, big sales occur. Um, you know, new customers are, are found by these companies, yeah, like et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's, it's an important thing. And, and I, I say party tongue in cheek, but truly, you know, uh, if people are coming and they're having a good time, then, uh, uh, you know, they're going to come back. So, so like the goal is to uh, use the content as like one of the key marketing tools. Um, but everything that I've found throughout the years is that people remember one or two sessions max. Uh, you know, they may go to a lot of the content. They may go, go into the event thinking, oh, I'm going to go, you know, sit at this stage all day because all this content is stuff I'm super interested in. But they'll end up wandering. They'll end up, you know, looking at their phone while people are speaking. You know, like people get distracted. The conference is a time to go meet people, interact with companies, uh, interact with speakers, find your co-founder, find investors. Like it, it's, it's such an important platform for you to make a difference in your own existence in Bitcoin and the content will be on YouTube. So, uh, uh you know, like if, if you're truly kind of coming just to watch the content and you're not planning on meeting anyone, you're not planning on interacting with anyone, uh, then personally, I think you're missing a huge opportunity. So, uh, uh, that's, that's, I guess how I Pareto think about it. It's kind of like a come for the speakers, Day for the people. I love that. In fact, I know that that's not your slogan for the event, but it could be right. Come for the speakers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I, you know, when, when I look at the event from a media standpoint for compass and just in general, it just seems like an amazing opportunity to find like-minded individuals where one and one equals three. Right. And that is just networking at its best, right? Where you, whether it's a VC that's looking for a startup or for us, it's another mining partner that we just haven't had the chance to sit down, touch base with and find some synergy. Could you talk about some of the networking opportunities that are going to be available that are not just, you know, walking the floor and bumping into people and introducing yourself, but some that are kind of curated. So what I would say is like, uh, first and foremost, kind of the entire conference is set up for networking. You know, uh, uh, it's very much a like free flowing experience where, uh, uh, you know, except for maybe a few key main stage content moments, you, you're, you're not necessarily like pulled in any direction, uh, uh strongly. So it's, it's like a pick your own adventure. Uh, the, the, like the industry pass especially is set up for networking. There's tons of lounges around the event, you know, where you can gra grab a beer, you can go set up a meeting, you can kind of grab some space, grab a table, uh, have that conversation. Uh, and then obviously like the whale experience, uh, uh, for like the VIPs, you know, we've got like full on private meeting areas, uh, uh, to go have like some loaded conversations. You know, I, I alluded to this earlier, but we've had multi-billion dollar deals go down at our event. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of wild. Like you, you put people all in one place and it, it's a little bit of like, uh, organized chaos, like things happen. Like, uh, uh, so, you know, the, uh, uh, if you're not finding success, uh, uh, doing the networking at our event, 
Uh, the other thing I'll say is that there are tons of amazing satellite events. Uh, uh, you know, like great places after hours, go grab a happy hour, uh, uh, go to, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's going to be like a skeet shooting event. There's going to be all sorts of stuff that's happening, you know, a golf tournament. So you, like the, the conference is the tent pole. It's the, uh, it's the flag in the ground. And then so much of the magic of the experience occurs all around the city of Nashville around the event. Uh, uh, we truly take over the city for the week. And, um, and so, you know, you'll be able to drop into all sorts of satellite events and meet new people, uh, and have in interesting conversations there too. So, uh, I guess, does that help answer your question? Yeah, that was absolutely excellent. And I just think that I, I didn't know what you were going to say. You know, if you're not finding networking events, then it's almost like it's so set up that it's you, right. That you need to just continue to get yourself out of your comfort zone and just go, you know, walk up and talk to, to people. I think one of the cooler things, and I'll admittedly say I've never been to the Bitcoin conference before, but I have been to some of the other larger industry events. At those particular events, it was always interesting to see, and people would say this, that like, you know, walking the floor is a certain, is a certain crowd. And then there's the crowd at night that are doing the private dinners. And then there's the crowd that are going to the events that are open till 11 p.m. that are like clubbing. And then there's the crowd that's getting up at 7 a.m. and sitting in Starbucks and are kind of, you know, putting together deals or setting up for the rest of the day. Uh, so I, I just think it's very interesting. And I'm personally excited to see. And you kind of jump to my next question of, of interest, which is like outside of maybe the business and I'm using kind of air quotes. What are the other events that are there to just like put people in the same room to do a fun activity? You said some skeet shooting. Uh, we're going to be in Nashville. Is there going to be like a country karaoke? I'm just thinking that, you know, there's going to be something that's going to be Nashville esh. Uh, what are some other things that you guys have set up if you can share them? And I'm sure that there's going to be a surprise or two that you guys are kind of going to keep, uh, keep hidden. Yeah. So, you know, the, the short of it is, uh, uh, we have a whole page on the website called Bitcoin Week, uh, uh, you know, the satellite events page. And uh, that is truly like we're trying we're doing our best to like log all of the events that are happening around our, our conference because there are so many. Uh, uh, so, you know, name it and someone's probably organizing uh, an event around it. I will say, you know, I'm born and raised in Nashville. I love Nashville. I think Nashville is one of the most fun cities in the entire world. Uh, and the cool part about this conference and this venue is it is almost smack dab in the middle of Broadway. Uh, like it is, it is truly in the heart of downtown. And so you will walk out of the venue into, you know, the, the scene that is like Nashville nightlife and Nashville nightlife is the most fun nightlife in the world. And, you know, I, I loved our time in Miami and, you know, maybe someday we'll be back in Miami, but uh, one thing that, you know, personally, my background and who I am, uh, going out in Miami was always difficult because you go out to be seen and it's kind of like a high pressure, uh, uh, like I've got to dress up. I've got to, you know, who am I going out with? Who am I going to be like, uh, around? Like what's, what club are we going, you know, all that kind of stuff. Nashville, you go out to have fun. Uh, people go out in jeans, they go out in shorts, t-shirts, you know, uh, uh, it's so low pressure. Um, and, and because of that, like you get a much more authentic, fun experience. You get live music, you dance. I'm a big dancer. I love to dance. So, uh, you know, Nashville, I just love Nashville. Like you're going to have a great time. And then even if you're not in the, the, I, you know, you don't want to go out. There's tons of satellite events happening between like, you know, the karate combats there. There's a golf tournament. There's a, uh, you know, a skeet shooting, like I said, there's the Cattleman's Feast. We're doing a block party around, uh, you know, we're, we're putting on the block party outside uh, around the event. So there's just so many things happening. You're not going to be able to hit them all. Uh, so, you know, just disabuse yourself of the notion that you're going to be able to have a holistic experience, but choose your own adventure and, and whatever you want to get out of it. Like, I promise you, you're going to be able to get out of it. Is Nashville ready for thousands of Bitcoiners? is Nashville ready? And I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in Nashville. She lives about, well, she lives about 45 minutes, I think outside of the center, but you know, she says she lives in Nashville. And I had mentioned that I'm coming down to Nashville. I think I'm going to get dinner uh, with her family and we're going to get to hang out. And she was like, wait, how many people? 
So first of all, how many people are you guys expecting? And then is Nashville ready for all these Bitcoiners? Uh, I don't think any city could ever be ready for, you know, 20,000 <laughs> Bitcoiners to descend on it. Uh, yeah, like uh, what I will say is Nashville is very aligned with the Bitcoiner ethos in a lot of ways. So uh, I think that, you know, my gut says you're going to see a lot of people come to this conference and leave it being like, I'm moving to Nashville. Uh, that's, you know... That's not the goal of the conference per se. Uh, that's the goal maybe of me as, as the Nashvillian uh, uh, who wants to see people fall in love with, you know, my hometown. Um, so, you know, I hope it happens. Uh, I think it's going to happen because truly like it's just a great city to, to go visit, but then it's a great city to live in too. So um, uh, yeah, like is the city ready? No, I, I don't think that they have any clue what they signed up for when they agreed the, to host the Bitcoin conference with us. Uh, uh, but in the best way possible, like they're going to get, you know, we're going to blow them out of the water. Uh, they're going to be, they're going to be asking us to come back every year for sure. For, for the conference, what are some things that maybe people need to keep in mind? Cause many people who are going to listen to this are probably going to listen to it because they're like, Oh, I'm going to the conference. Like, what should I keep in mind? The story in my head is it's going to be July in Nashville and having known July in Memphis, which is only three hours away to the East, I guess you could say uh, to the West, excuse me. Um, it's going to be warm. So are there, is I, you know, is there going to be like a pool party? Cause I feel like in Miami there was yachts and there were all these things at night that were kind of, you know, bringing in water. So are there going to be any kind of like water events, anything for the heat? Like what is going to be going on? Because like I said, I feel like it's going to be a pretty warm, uh, outside for, for all the events. Yeah. So, uh, uh Nashville in July is warm. You know, I, I wouldn't put it in the like sweltering category like we got ac down there don't worry uh <laughs> for for all you northerners coming down like uh, uh you're, you're gonna be okay uh, uh the uh nashville in july is is truly it's when the city shines uh okay. you know something Great. about the summer and country music and you know going to a honky tonk throwing on some cowboy boots like uh, uh it just fits well so uh, I think that people are going to have a, a fantastic time, like being in the city during July. Uh, I know for sure people are planning some pool parties. Uh, uh, there, you know, there's going to be plenty of ways to beat the heat during the day. Easiest way is just come to the venue. Like you know, we'll, we'll be having that AC cranked hard, so uh, uh, it'll it'll be nice and cool there. But uh, yeah, you know, the there's a whole lake um, that's just right outside of Nashville uh, called Percy Priest. And uh, I know a few people that are renting pontoon boats or a houseboat out there, and, and they're just going to stay out on the lake uh, during, you know, that night and throw some, some uh, you know, parties out there probably and, uh, and then come into the venue during the day. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a great culture. Nashville shines in the summertime. Uh, and, you know, don't be afraid of the heat. Like, it, it's not that hot, uh, especially at night, you know, when everyone's actually going around, uh, going out and about. Um, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I love that. I was just, I was just kind of interested because, you know, July in, in the South can be, can be a little warm, but I love to hear that that's when it shines. Focusing now back on the conference a little bit, what are some of the main speakers that you personally are just most excited to see? And these don't necessarily need to be the headliners. They could be some of the speakers that you got that you didn't think were maybe going to accept, or are maybe some people that aren't as big on the radar as maybe per se a Michael Saylor, for example, uh, what are some of the speakers that you're personally looking forward to, to have at the conference? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, and, and I appreciate the framing because it's easy to say like, oh, you know, RFK, Michael Saylor, Kathy Wood, Ed Snowden, uh, you know, like some of those people that we just have featured up at, up at, the, at the top. Uh, some of the folks who I find to be particularly interesting, and, and I, I love hanging out with them too, uh, Alan Farrington. Uh, uh, he's like one of my favorite Bitcoiners. He's so smart. He's so witty. Uh, he also has like very interesting ideas. He wrote that Bitcoin is Venice book uh, a few years ago. Um, I'm excited to see him again. Uh, Daruv Bonsal uh, from Unchained is, is I, I believe, like maybe the smartest person in Bitcoin. I know that's a contentious uh, uh, topic of who's the smartest person in Bitcoin, but I would absolutely put him towards the top of that list. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, he'll be speaking last year. He spoke about Bitcoin and AI alignment, and this was like before all of the AI craze. Uh, so it was, it was like right in the beginning of the AI craze. Um, let's see who else, uh, I think we've announced him. Yeah, we have, uh, TJ Miller, who's, uh, you know, the, the actor from, uh, what, what was the HBO show, uh, uh, Silicon Valley. And, uh, he's a, he's a funny guy. Uh, he's been doing a lot of up at pub, pub key. 
um, and, and, you know, excited to meet him for the first time. Um, I would say, you know, Russell Brand will be very interesting. He brings his own uh, world of, of kind of thought and uh, his own following and his own controversy uh, as well. And, and so I'm interested to hear what he says and, and you know, hear about his journey through the, the Bitcoin world. The other thing that I would say uh, is we're going to have a lot of the, um, let's say, the suits. Uh, the uh, I'm a Wall Street guy here to talk about Bitcoin kind of uh, people. And it's going to be very important to at the same time as we like are supportive and excited to have, um, you know, the uh, the suits there and we want to make them feel like they're welcome into the community. Uh, I also want to challenge them. Like, you know, I, I think that they have a very narrow view of Bitcoin, of, of Bitcoin, the asset. And uh, I want them to leave uh, the conference understanding better Bitcoin, the network, Bitcoin, the, the monetary tool, Bitcoin, the, uh, uh, the rails by which value flows and, and, uh, and certainly, you know, uh, Bitcoin, the ideals. So, you know, like uh, uh, the, the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is, is like, um, it's kind of like objectively true, you know, like it, you can't really argue with Bitcoin as if like the, it's a, it's a scam, it's a fraud. Like all of those arguments are out the window at this point, you know, like it's real, it's legitimate. And so now you need to think about why is it being adopted so rapidly? Why do so many people use it? What, you know, and, and once you hear what's happening, then, you know, you, you can't really ignore the trend. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you need to start wrestling with like, well, maybe there is something broken and, and maybe maybe Bitcoin is fixing it. And and maybe we need to be paying attention and actually highlighting what's broken with the system. And, you know, some of the people that are going to be speaking are some of the people who have helped break that system, let's say. Uh, and, and so I'm very excited to, to maybe have the first conversation of many uh, with some of them uh, uh, to truly, you know, work on repairing the world. So, um I know that's a that's a lofty goal, but but one that I'm excited about. Yeah, when you say the suits, who are you specifically referring to? Are you referring to some of the ETF issuer, issuers who have really publicly only been around this for 12 months, and maybe even before we're disparaging it? Is are these VCs who maybe are just there for the money, and maybe you're saying you should be there for the culture and the ideals? Who are you exactly talking about? Yeah, you know, maybe I'll leave it intentionally vague, but uh, uh, the. Like certainly there are ETF issuers who are coming from not a, a Bitcoiner ethos and a Bitcoiner uh, mindset. And so uh, I want them to be exposed. Some of the ETF issuers, uh, let's say their leadership aren't speaking, but they're there. Um, and so, you know, uh, you might see them at the event and, uh, you know, don't don't scare them. You know, like uh, <laughs> we're not that scary. Uh, yeah, the la don't let the laser eyes fool you. So. Uh, uh, you know, like I, I want them to have a good time and I want them to authentically engage, uh, with our community. And, um, and in order to do that, like, you know, we have to, we have to meet them where they are and then pull them along with us. Uh, and so that's, that's a hope that I have and we'll see if we're successful. The conference is coming up. It's now, this will come out on Tuesday, July 2nd, I believe. Uh, and so when it comes out, it's only about three weeks away. So if people are looking still to get tickets, if they want to go, uh, what are the discounts looking like? What are some of the reasons why they should say, you know what, let me try to, let me try to make time to get down to Nashville in late July. Yeah. So, I mean, tickets are flying, uh, uh, to be candid. So, you know, I don't think it's like, we could have up to 50,000 people at this event, you know, like uh, uh, we would, we would be panicking and we would have to change a lot of things that we're doing, but the venue <laughs> itself is not going to limit us on, on ticket sales. Uh, so, you know, it's not one of those things where like, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we're going to sell out. We, we could, we could kind of uh, cap the attendance based on our current plans and, and probably we'll end up selling out based on that. But, but we're not, you know, we're not going to cap it because we want as many people to come as possible. And, and if it feels a little crowded, that's, that's a good thing. You know, that just sends people out, uh, uh, to then explore all the other things that are happening around. Like, you know, the critical mass begets critical mass and, and, you know, Bitcoin conference is about the adoption and the furthering of Bitcoin. So come one, come all, we want as many people as possible. Uh, in terms of like, uh, uh, discounts, 
definitely check out our affiliate network. You know, they, they have discounts. We don't give out any discounts ourselves unless it's like, you know, a flash sale or something like that. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, I know there are quite a few, uh, uh, you know, media partners and, and affiliates who, who have a code. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, uh, what was the other question? I think that was it. Just looking at discount codes. Okay. And if you just even want to take a, a time as we kind of transition and just talk about where people can go get tickets right now and then where they can get more information. I know the website has all of these answers, but if you want to shout that out, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, the website is b.tc forward slash conference. So uh, we got the best domain, I think, in the world for Bitcoin, uh, uh, b.tc. And uh, yeah, go check us out. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at the Bitcoin Conf. Um, and yeah, you know, like uh, uh, we're, we're working hard. You know, we're, we're trying to build the best platform for Bitcoin, period. So uh, we're doing our best. And, uh, you know, there's some things that, uh, I can't say yet that we've been working our butts off to try and make happen that um, can take this whole conversation to a need, another level. Um, and, and, you know, uh, uh, if you were there in 2021 for the uh, El Salvador legal tender announcement, you know, I think that was a point in time that that was a moment in time for Bitcoin. And like, if you were there, you were there. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully a lot of people will remember that moment for the rest of their lives. Uh, if we're successful with this event, uh, people will remember this event for the rest of their lives too, in the exact same way. So more to come there. Uh, uh, we, we may not be successful to make some of these last uh, minute things happen. Uh, all I can tell you is that, um, we are at a place in time in 2024 that is way far ahead of where we were in 2021, this far out. And the Bukele legal Tinder announcement came to us in the week before the event. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's like two weeks away from us right now. And, and, you know, based on how much is happening in like this past week, I can tell you that it can get, it can get nuts over the next few weeks. So uh, buckle up and make sure you come, don't miss history. And uh, you know, if, uh, if we do it right, this will be, uh, this will change the world. Brandon, this has been great to catch up with you. Uh, thank you so much for the time. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. You can follow us on X, which was Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. Brandon, once again, thank you so much. And I will see you in Nashville. See you there. Can't wait. Can't wait.